Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the H Cup presented by BTS. We're going to be taking a look at game number three between Newbie and Tong Fu and what has been an absolutely, completely and utterly exciting series. Some crazy, crazy games, especially uh, game number one was pretty nuts, and then game number two just felt like a straight up uh, Chen type of game. It was really cool. I'm Lyrical Dota, joined today by Danny Lee Cass. And Danny, uh, what are you expecting to see this time? Do you think we see Naga Siren again? So, we had a really long first game. We may see Naga Siren. I don't know if they want to run it again, as it wasn't really that great second game. But really long first game. You had a really short second game. Are we going to get an in-the-middle game this time? Because I, I think I'll, my heart would appreciate that. I'm not down for any long, long drawn-out seesaw games again. Um, but the, in terms of the Naga Siren, though, like, as you saw first game, the Naga Siren worked a great success. But it was mostly because of the high ground defense. Second game, we saw the weakness of Naga. If your team can't hold the game so that the Naga can accumulate farm, then that's the issue that you're going to be running into. Naga is a non-factor when she has no farm and the game ends too soon. So for the third game, I feel like because they got beaten out the second time, they might have to change their strategy and just sort of win it out as a normal game, I suppose. And starting off with an Earth Spirit pick here for Tong Fu, like this is a great way to start the game. You've already got a very strong laner to work with as well as... Earth Spirit's a great roamer too. Yeah. There's moments where Earth Spirit can just pull out these amazing plays and you just can't do anything because he's such an elusive roamer. Yeah, absolutely. He's one of those heroes where, like, if you get off to an early... Like, he allows you to get off to an early start. You you roll into the mid lane, you uh, end up getting that... I think it's 80% slow or something ridiculous like that. Uh, yeah, 80% movement slow at all levels. And it's just like, what do you do if you're out of position at that point? You just immediately end up getting uh, killed, depending upon who it is that you're in lane with. Um, and that can be any lane and he can do it from what the heck is the range with the rolling boulder it, it ends up being a speed of 1600 and then a distance of 800 so almost as much as a fissure it's it's pretty freaking crazy how effective that is and uh if you're newbie you need to think about all right a mid laner that's able to either tank a gank or dodge it like uh, sort of along the same lines as a puck yeah, Puck sounds very reasonable going up against the Earth Spirit. Although you still have to be careful. If the Earth Spirit's quick enough and, and gets the silence off, then Puck in, in himself is going to be very vulnerable. So if they do pick up a Puck, he's going to be very quick with his reactions. Yeah. Unless maybe you decide to have a, a support babysitting the mid lane, knowing that there's going to be a lot of pressure, they picked up the Lion and the Doom. So you already got some great lockdown in the Lion. He might be the babysitter for the mid lane, assuming that this Doom is either going to play off lane or in the oh, jungle. We've seen off lane Dooms for the entire series, right? Yeah. Like, I, I guess, except the first game, because Naga was... Nago's offlane. <laughs> yeah, Nago was offlane. Um, yeah, we've, we've been seeing him pretty consistently there, or like as sort of a jungling offlane where he goes over there, picks up a camp, and then goes back afterwards. Particularly in that last game, he was uh, sort of trading off duties with the Winter Wyvern between going in the offlane and then just going back over into the jungle. So um, I like what we're seeing so far. Um, newbie have somewhat consistently, I think every game so far, run Lion and Doom. So this is a, a type of, of, t of heroes that they really believe in. Um, I'm curious what the, the way this is going to look without the Naga Siren. Like, do they just pick an alchemist and try and do it anyways? Um, I don't know. They could try. <laughs> they could try. Uh, but honestly, because they ran the two exact same drafts, I think we're going to be in for something different, and at this point, I'm not too sure if we should be guessing, because Newbie may pull out something crazy, because if you pull out offlane Naga Siren first game, they are capable of probably doing anything. And in terms of farming lion too. And safe lane farming lion, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of Tong Fu, though, they've, they've been playing pretty straightforward as a team. Like You can sort of tell what they're doing as, as a draft, but like, you can already tell they want to have a... A lot of pressure on the map with the Invoker as well as the Earth Spirit. This is probably going to be an Exhort Invoker game, just because if you have an Earth Spirit roaming around, there's going to be so many opportunities of landing some of those Sun Strikes. So, and also Tong Fu, by nature as a team, they've always been the ones to initiate all of the engagements. Newbie has always been the ones to sort of react to everything. Mm -hmm. So, Tong Fu. I'm expecting a lot of aggressive heroes. The Naga Siren bands, we are definitely not seeing it. They're, du they're just double checking and saying, okay, they might not pick it, but we're going to ban it anyway so we don't play it. 
Yeah, and I think that's the right decision. It just it changes the dynamic of the game. I will mention real quickly to any of you people that are out there, uh, CDEC Youth is facing off against Ehome on Beyond the Summit 2, seconds. and I believe Gods and somebody else is casting that one. So if you want to go check out the other game that's going on, this is sort of the, the last remnants of the group stages, and this one that they're doing is the first in the playoff stages. But Marana is who they're going to run for. So um, kind of interesting. I am wondering, considering you already have... Uh, somewhat of the offlane and the, the lion as a support role, if we might end up seeing this being a Cormorana. It's... I'm just trying to remember, what team ran the Cormorana? I think it was um, Secret, I think. They put Misery when Misery was still in Secret. I'm pretty sure he played a mid-Morana. I didn't get to see the game. I only had people seconds, tell me uh, that the Morana was picked, and I got super excited because it's been a very long time since we've seen Morana. I think the last time we saw her was when roaming Marana was still a thing. Yes. Um, she's really fallen off in terms of popularity, but she is definitely a great niche pick. She gives you so much in that you get the Moonlight Shadow for the free smoke, essentially. You've got the arrow that if you ma manage to land it from a quite a distance away, it's a five second disable, yeah. which is also very elusive too. Um, so they're gonna pick up the Ursa after the Marana. So honestly, this is, and this is going to probably be a position for roaming Marana. Yeah. As a, if you have arrows been thrown out by newbie Tongfu, you've got to be super careful in their lanes because if it gets caught out, then newbie can definitely rip some of these heroes to shreds. Definitely, and they're going to go right for the Nature's Prophet and the Slark too. So, um, again, very aggressive. The thing that's kind of unique about Slark is that he's not a very strong laning hero if you're on equal footing with him. But if you have any type of advantage in the lane, then you're going to be able to to find kills pretty easily with the sort of pounce dark pack combo. But you need to be able to out DPS him with the rest of the supports that you've got. Um, of course, you know, Roaming Marana, it, it got popularized. Again, I think Fear did like the, the crazy game where he hit like 40 arrows or something nuts like that and just won his team the game uh, when we were coming down off the Shanghai Major. So uh, there's been some precedent, but it did sort of go away after that one. We haven't seen a ton of it. And I haven't seen any Marana played at all in this Chinese Dota tournament that we've seen so far. Um, so I'm really curious what the role is that they're going to be thinking about with this hero. Uh, obviously with Ursa, the Roshan is a great boon there on the dire side. And um, it's not like necessary to have an arrow in there with it, but uh, it does help to be able to scout out, which is the other nice part about that. So I, I kind of like the pick. Um, I am a little bit concerned about the lack of setup for the arrows, though, and I'm not sure if the last pick is going to remedy it or not. I kind of would like to, I don't know, I'm not sure exactly what I'd like to see with it. It depends on what the last pick ends up being. If it's going to be a mid or if it's going to be a support, thus turning the Marana into a core Marana. Um, I want to discuss to you actually about this. Oh, okay, it is going to be a <laughs> support Marana, but I don't think anyone was expecting the Tinker Vic. I wanted to talk to you about the Ursa first. Tom Fu has a lot of ways to control the Ursa, so I'm not too sure how effective he's going to be. Like, there's an Earth Spirit that can sort of move him around a little bit. You've got the Sprouts from Nature's Prophet. You've got Invoker that's going to always have a cold snap. So this Ursa pick for me, like with the first three picks from Tong Fu, it would have been sketchy as is, but they're gonna keep on going with it. Like, what do you, what are your thoughts on the Ursa? I think that this might be uh, one of those Five games where if Earth Spirit is able to get up his Agnum Scepter, Enchant uh, Remnant would be great against him because I don't believe that you can Agnum Scepter Rage out of it. Uh, and this might be a game where, where Ursa wants to go for an Agnum Scepter um, well, I don't know. There's not, like, the hard lockdown. He could probably just get away with BKB, actually, uh, and then going for, like, the Blink Abyssal. I don't think he has to actually has to go for Ags. It's it's definitely an opportunity, but uh, he can probably go for a little bit just more of the heavy lockdown. And with a Tinker there, too, like, Nature's Prophet versus Tinker is a matchup that... I haven't seen in freaking forever, but it's it's really hard to tell who ends up coming out on top. Like Tinker is going to be able to blow up your Nature's Prophet more often than not. Uh, but likewise, if you get the jump on either one of these heroes, it's really whoever gets the better initiation is the biggest determining factor of who comes out on top. Alrighty then. So we're just waiting for the last hit, last pick here for Tong Fu. They're looking for another support. I like the disruptor ban for newbie. Disruptor is a great way to sort of delay a tinker when he's trying to TP into a fight to help. Any supports that look really attractive to you here? Um, I kind of like the idea of maybe thinking about a bane. Um, I I don't know if if that's something that they would want to go for, but being able to allow the Earth Spirit to roam so that that way you could have a really strong support combo there. 
Uh, that seems really strong to me. Um, I don't necessarily love any of the sort of jungling types of heroes. They're gonna go for the Rubik. I, I don't know if I love that. It, it's great for roaming with the Earth Spirit if they want to do that, but I, I'm wondering if they're gonna leave U9 a little bit too much on an island. Like, he could potentially get pressured here, and if he does, this is gonna be a problem. Don't forget, you've also got the magic resistance factor for Rubik, so yeah, I feel like nice. this is also reasonable going up against the Tinker, giving your team essentially a uh, some free magic resistance. There are actually some spells you actually you want to be stealing if you're Rubik too, though. Like everything in Lion's Kit's great. If you can steal Doom, that's a great asset. I think for Marana, maybe Moonlight Shadow Arrows, really the only things you'd be looking for. And if you actually get uh, if you can get laser from Tinker. That's probably one of the best ways to deal with Ursa, because all he does is physical damage. If you if he gets blinded, there's nothing he can do. Yeah, no, that's so gonna be uh, that's gonna be something that he would love to be able to get. Um, we'll see how they end up being able to play it. I'm kind of curious too if the Agnum Scepter eventually is gonna end up being able to get there. Uh, there's a bunch of really great spells to steal. The other thing that we'll mention is that you know. KPI, he played a pretty good uh, Naga Siren. I'm assuming he plays a good Tinker as well. Uh, it's kind of a similar style of hero to some extent. And being able to micro, well, it, Tinker, it's not really micro. It's just having high APM and always making sure you're, you're doing something. Uh, there's no downtime on that hero. But very curious to see how this goes. Um, is there any sort of predictions that you have of what we're going to end up seeing here? Is there a team that you're particularly favored? Does it depend upon like the, the laning stage more often than not? Or uh, is there just sort of one team that's straight up better? It might be the game of roamers because both teams do have very strong roaming heroes. You have the Earth Spirit, as you mentioned earlier on, as Earth Spirit is probably the king of roamers. He's just super annoying. And you also have to remember the Marana factor for, for newbie. If any of these arrows land and it becomes a five second arrow, that hero is more than likely dead. So we'll have to just keep an eye on the roamers for now. In terms of lanes, I honestly don't think we're going to be seeing anything else crazy. I, I'm actually curious if the KPI is going to have a good time in that mid lane. Because yeah. he is still going up against an Invoker, and Tinker is quite vulnerable to getting jumped on. Even just by an Invoker if he's not careful. Yeah, well, he picked up the boots first, which I think is a really good decision here. Uh, you want to make sure you're going to be able to dodge those ganks as they come through. You know that they're going to be coming, and as long as you're fairly aware, and they've got this fairly nice ward down too, which... As I say that, that's taken away, so never mind. Um, LPS on top of it and make sure that that ends up uh, not happening. So maybe a little bit more difficult. They're, they're going to be careful about this, this Earth Spirit as he roams in. So just in the top lane, they tried to go for a jump onto Faith. And it seems like for now they're going to be using predominantly Sanshang as the setup for the arrows. But I saw just then, they tried to set up for the arrow and Faith just completely juked it by by running north and waiting for it to pass by. So I'm not too sure if I'm going to be too happy about this, if it's going to be that successful or not. But this top lane is going to be a bit of trouble for Faith. If the Miranda does leave lane though, Faith does have a lot of opportunities to really harass Sanjing out, especially once he starts summoning those triants. Yeah. I'm going to try and go for a, a quick little reconnect, I think, just to make sure. This one looks a little bit better than it did previously, but um, if there's any way to make sure that this Dota looks good for all of our fine viewers out there, I'm going to try and do it. Uh, it as, far as, as far as like kill potential goes, um, is it just down to that Earth Spirit and when he roams in, or is it more about the uh, sort of the reactions of the, the people they're against? What are your thoughts there? It depends on where some of these supports are for newbie. The Marana so far, she's sort of moved into the jungle and she's going to be jungling for the first two levels, I suppose. She's already arrowed one of the big creeps and she's looking to arrow either the centaur here or obviously you don't want to be arrowing a satyr. So it seems like he's not going to be getting the level twos. He's going to try to roam mid. But yeah, I think it's it's going to be based on a lot of the reactions from the supports because honestly, these lanes that both sides have relatively equal heroes I suppose like the biggest one is the Tinker like how's the Tinker going to do in lane because in the nature of Tinker he needs to have a good start just so we can get the good timing on boots of travels then all of a sudden you've got the global presence on the map for, for newbie whereas for, for Tongfu they've essentially got free global presence because Faith is always going to be able to TP in yeah. uh, it's being chased up by a lion though but he can steal the arcane rune I love that pickup for him to bring in that nature's call uh, cooldown down to 25 seconds. It's pretty great. Uh, and I mean, it's better if you're just going to be going for a straight jungling route, but it works well here as well. So meanwhile, Marana picks up that level two as you're talking about. And uh, with that arrow, able to finish that one off fairly quickly. So 
Uh, this is going to help her to make sure that she can get a little bit better initiation with the leap, but the roll in again... No, okay. They're not going to go for it. That's just going to chase on out Lee here. He does have that Orb of Venom, which slows him down that much more and is always frustrating to go against, but not going to really be able to do anything. So it looks like they've completely abandoned that bottom lane. Uh, when you were disconnected, the Doom was trying to sap up EXP, and then all of a sudden he got converged by three. He didn't die because they ran out of disables and he just completely TP'd out. Yeah. So Lee doesn't feel safe in the bottom lane. He's going to move into the jungle for now. He is going to be within a good distance from Tinker, but honestly, he's not in a position to really help out the Tinker if he gets jumped on. Yeah. So I think for Lee, he's just got to focus on making sure he gets those levels. I don't know if he should be going back into lane. He probably will have a better time if he just goes into the jungle and just farms there. Then at least he can be guaranteeing himself a good timing on that 6, because if he goes in the bottom lane, he's putting himself at risk, because there's a lot of disables on Tongvu or ways to sort of keep him in place to finish him off. Assuming he doesn't have a TP scroll, of course. Yeah. Well, and you say, you know, how scared he is in this lane right now. You're seeing this, this Slark zone him solo, and that's what happens when you're stuck down there at those lower levels. You're not able to really effectively um, make a, uh, your presence felt in the lane, and so he, he's going to be able to keep on getting some more experience, but it's coming at a bit of a price. And they do manage to get this pull off to the side, and... Everything's all hunky-dory for the moment. I'm kind of curious what this Marana is going to end up doing, because she ended up going for a little bit more farming away. She went for the, the jungling route, and um, now has the level 3, so the two points and arrow. It's it's depending a lot on her to actually hit these perfectly for it to work, and uh, it's kind of frustrating. Yeah, it seems he's playing more or less this sort of greedy Marana, trying to farm the jungle, more or less. Like, he hasn't really made any sort of presence on the map, and... Tongfu, they actually know where she is. They scouted her out with the with the treants. And she's not really in a position to make anything happen for, for newbie. She's just farming away. She's not making anything happen. It looks like KPI in the mid lane. Going to be jumped on by two as an Aegis Prophet TPs. And that's going to be first blood as well. Going into the pockets of Lin. And that's not the start that you'd be looking for if you're a Tinker. Although, up in the top lane, gosh, Sancheng is standing right next to LPC. And that was the setup they were looking for. Unfortunately, 10 seconds too late. Otherwise, it could have been first blood. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And... I mean, Earth Spirit is a great hero, but if you get hit by one of those arrows, it's just all over, particularly with the Ursa there as well. Uh, and Ursa is now level 5. They're in a great position. And, you know, we, we talked about the Tinker and his sort of, you know, I, I do believe I've heard that KPI is a pretty great Tinker player, but it's something where you still are limited by the hero and what he brings to the table. Um, at the end of the day, this is still somebody who's vulnerable to ganks, and if you're able to catch him, you're just going to end up losing. We do end up seeing the Doom go down in the bottom lane, and uh, it's just sort of what you're talking about, a little bit too afraid and um, not able to, to get away from that one. Yeah. Well, the aggression for Tom Fu, it's, this is three games in a row where we've seen them sort of take the, the game by the reins and just control it completely. Like, look, they've even brought Faith in to go for a simple kill onto San Sheng. He won't be able to get out of this, but they did TP Lin in. They're trying to go for a kill onto LPC, but it looks like he's just going to drop because the Infernal Blade. Sunstrike completely whiffs, but it looks like Lee's going to be dropping here. There's another TP coming through. No, he heals with the Scorched Earth, and now Moose here, and is all of a sudden going to grab a kill onto the Nature's Prophet. U9 has no mana for a pounce. He can't afford to get caught here, and there's no way for him to get mana, so he's trying to go for the tree jukes, but Moo rips him a new one. Now Kabu, the only lone survivor. No one going to be able to chase him down for newbie, but great rotations, quick TPs, and unfortunately for Tong3, they lose too many heroes. Yeah, and that's their safe lane. Slark, I mean, you can't argue, all right, you brought Moo down here, he's not going to be in lane, but he's now down in this lane farming, and it, everything is all fine, because he also kind of part of these kills. He got two kills now uh, in the first six minutes of this game, and honestly, he's in a situation where he could even think about going and trying to take Roshan, and he is going to end up going for the overpower. They're going to walk in and do this. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know what you do to stop this at this point. Like, your Earth Spirit is up in the top lane trying to find people out, and they're going to maybe go check it out, but I don't know if they can really stop him with the Doom being there, too. Well, maybe they can. I don't know if they feel comfortable going for this yet. Ooh. They're going to jump onto Lee. There's going to be the Dark Pack damage getting them, trying to drop him oh, fairly low. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, that's that's unfortunate. Well, at least they stopped the Roche attempt, though. So it, it did force Moo to just sort of go back and 
keep on farming on these ancients. He's ready for Roche, but he needs to have that opening to take Roche. Uh, in the top lane, unfortunately, San Shang, he doesn't get hit with the kick, though. And all of a sudden, the Mirana trying to get the arrow completely whiffs Dukes. And unfortunately, no one will die for Tong Fu. And luckily for Newbie, they didn't lose the lion. Yeah, they kept him out of that, and he's alive. Uh, not the carry lion this time around, but still very important hero. And so LPC is going to move back over into the jungle. It does scout out that there is this tinker who's farming away with the ward that they were able to place down. And with just the soul ring now, they need to be careful. The big problem, though, is they're going to end up TPing in now on the Nature's Prophet. KPI, he's going to end up going down, and they find another kill on him. God, and that just, it so badly hurts his farm. They were able to throw out the March of the Machines, but I don't Arrow? think that they find Faith that he's able to dodge away from it and Arrow? doesn't end up getting on the pain train. He's in there with Moo. Oh, God, a big bad bear is in the woods with you. That's not good at all. Oh, God, that, that looked really painful, but geez, they're really, really putting pressure on that tanker. He's only sitting at 200 gold right now, and it's eight minutes in. Ideally, he'd be looking at about a 12 to 15 minute boot of travels timing. And with the rate that Tong Fu just keeps on jumping on the Tinker, that doesn't really seem like it's going to be happening anytime soon. Newbie needs to start making space for the Tinker, or if they can't make space, if they can't make space, at least get him to participate in some of these jumps. Like Kabu's trying to go in for a bit of a mission, but he walks right into Lee, who was standing on the high ground. Mm. They really need to give this Tinker some help. But Marana's farming, and she's six, which is great and all, but it's a support Marana. I mean, she, yeah, that's the problem, is, like, you would be able to farm up a, a good deal with this hero and actually turn into a pretty scary core with all of the, even just the levels, you do a good chunk of damage. Um, but the problem is, is that she's actually going for this headdress, and I'm assuming this might end up turning into, uh, he could, she could end up even going for mech. We've seen it a couple of times on Marana's where you go arcanes and then into guardians eventually. But you look here in the bottom lane and like, this is the issue is you're already going to be able to take this tier one tower. They get the lift now onto the doom, going to send it back for the moment and that makes sure that they're fine. But U9 has a hand of Midas. Like he got it, I think a minute and a half ago. Um, and uh, like, he's just going to continue to snowball out of control. He's going to get farmed so quickly as well. So while his team's making space, he can keep on farming in the jungle. He can actually participate in kills if he really wants to. There's no real way for Newbie to lock down the slug unless they throw the Doom out onto him. And obviously, U9's not going to let that happen. He's going to play very elusive. He's not going to be an easy to chase hero. And there's always going to be support from Tong Fu to sort of back up that slug. So um, the Newbie, they've got to make something happen. They, uh, they have the Moonlight Shadow. They've actually decided to smoke instead, and they're trying to make a rotation into the mid lane. Kabu was going to go onto the high ground, so he could have actually popped the smoke, and he has. So San Sheng, he's had it, um, had it popped, and they've essentially spotted out the gank. Arrow whips again. That's the third time that Arrow hasn't landed, and they managed to catch up Mu with the sprouts. That's going to prevent any sort of jump in from Yubi. They even pop the Moonlight Shadow, so they're not even going to be able to use that aggressively either. Yeah. Except for this Forge Spirit. That hurts. That that really hurts. Um, again, it's just like you want to be able to do something with these abilities. You need to actually translate them into anything at all. And I'm wondering if this is going to turn into one of those games again, uh, like game number one sort of for, for Tong Fu, where you just have one hero that's your carry that's doing all your damage. But like they're, they're so like Tinker doesn't have anything right now. Uh, he's halfway to his boots of travel. You've got the Murano who's building into, you know, a headdress item. You've got your, just, it's just not enough damage here. And they're going to, again, chase after this Tinker. He's going to have to run off to the side. They're going to rotate in now as well onto Faith, keeping him in, stuck over in the area. They throw out the arrow, did end up hitting, but they do manage to kill off Faith with that. So nicely played for the moment. And it looks like they're able to steal the Earth Spike. Again, I so want to apologize for the lag. We tried the reconnects. It is just not freaking working. And... Unfortunately, sometimes you get the good servers and sometimes you don't, I guess. Oh god. I was actually very lucky that Moo was in the was in the vicinity, otherwise they would have lost the Tinker quite easily, but for Moo to be there, they're quite lucky that that happened where it did. Now, we've actually got a small grouping here and they bought smoke on the lion, so we've got another potential three-man room coming out for the newbie. They're trying to make as much as they can happen, but we've got another smoke here for Tong Fu themselves. They're going to quickly minus the creep with Lin. And this could be a very sad situation for Mu. He is an Ursa, he does not have Enrage for 4 seconds. If they kill him before that, it could be a problem. He's silenced up, can they burst him down before he gets the Enrage? He pops and that's going to mitigate the damage, but the support not going to be there. No one was in a position to really defend him. Sansheng was running into lane, he didn't really want to TP in. 
And all of a sudden, without the Ursa, that's one of their main damage dealers off the map for newbie. So this tower is going to drop quite handily. Sometimes you just get five man ganked. It, it happens. Oh my God! The sun strike. Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? Oh God! They had the vision of him. Oh, that's that hurts so badly. Oh, he did buy his boots to travel. Yeah. Yeah. So at least that's up. But even though you got boots of travels on your Tinker, you still need to pick up the Dagon, the Blink Dagger, the Scythe of Ice, the Orchid, whatever he, whatever he needs to build. What what do you think is on my, in mind for the Tinker? Would what would he be really going for as his first item outside of a Blink? I, I think that you can probably end up. I, honestly, I'm wondering if they need to just go for like Dagon or something like that. But I don't know if that's going to be enough either. I, I feel like this is one of those games where you need damage, but the damage that you're going to get is going to come online too late, and then it's just it falls off so heavily. So I kind of feel like to be relevant at all, he needs a sheep stick, but then you need to transition your draft into somebody else getting all of the damage. Um, but like, it's it's just, it's all going to come too late. They already are going to take down this tier two tower in the top lane. And I don't feel like Tongfu are going to stop ever. No, they don't need to. They've got a draft that if they can push now, they may as well. Because if you leave the game too long, you're giving space to KPI on the Tinker. And Tinker does become a nuisance if he gets the farm that he wants really early. So you just take away all the map control, force the Tinker to play really, really defensively, and then after you've got the control, finish up those last few items, and then for Tongfu, they'd be ready to go high ground. It's just, compared to last game, Tongfu's high ground isn't as attractive as the previous game. They don't have a Chen, they... I don't believe they have a mech, do they? No one's really building into one. Oh, they've got one on the Earth Spirit that's coming, but that won't be done until maybe 20, 22 minutes, more or less. Yeah, I, I think that that's, but even that's going to be fine, like, because that's going to be when they're trying to push for high ground, I would assume. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of curious for this this Ursa, what the next build is. I, I feel like he kind of has to go Blink Dagger, um, but then you're also going to just be continuously controlled. You've got so much Disable on Tong Fu's side, and uh, he kind of just needs everything KPI. all at once. Oh god, really? <laughs> Jeez. He really wanted to push the creep wave. God, they, they brought in so many heroes as well to deal with that tinker. They they just don't want to give KPI any sort of space. He's got uh he's got a soul ring and, and a bottle, which is it's fine, but it doesn't help his survivability. Yeah. So Well, I we were debating about the Tinker pick again, it just it, it it doesn't feel like that's the type of draft that you can run in this situation with the ability that Tong Fu has to be aggressive like this. And we talked about the way that the matchup works. You've got whoever basically gets the initiation off, whoever has the better vision. And you see right now, this ward ended up getting reapplied again. They they still are gonna have all of this vision. It's just out of the range. Like that's a pretty freaking great ward because it's out of the range of where the sentry is on the high ground. It's freaking awesome. I'm, I'm loving it. Uh, and I, I think that Tong Fu have been able to sort of really create a, a well-executed draft here. So Moo's got the blink, as you have suggested. This won't really help his tank ability, but I'm pretty sure he's ready to use that Aegis Radiant just to make a kill happen. And they do know where LPC is, so all of a sudden, Moo, he gets kicked. It's going to buy a little bit of time. They pop an immediate doom. And can they actually kill off this Earth Spirit? He's actually really tanky. He blinks on top of him. Now, is that going to be enough? The lift preventing Moo from hitting oh, that kill. The LPC, he's going to survive the doom as well. It's completely backfired. Ursa losing so much HP, getting stunned and kited, and all of a sudden, Aegis has been wasted. And U9, he wants to try and go for a jump onto the Mirana. She's trying to TP. Is there any disables? No, there's not. They can't really finish her off. They found Lee instead. The Sun Strike lands! That's going to be another kill going in the way of Kong Fu. Because two heroes are dead, they can start opening the gateway to the base by taking this T2 down. Yeah, they are freaking on fire right now. Everything that they could possibly want, they're just able to hit it time and time again. And you saw there as well, like taking down the Aegis the first time, all of the rest of the side of Newbie was down here in the bottom lane chasing after the Invoker. And he was still able to jump in from the other side and not get killed off. And like, you know, the Nature's Prophet body blocking the Ursa with his Treants. Just every little play that Tong Fu can make they've been able to make it and they've been playing expertly really super impressed and again you're just you're stuck with these heroes that don't have the farm that they need they've been able to build a 7500 net worth lead in just about 16 minutes pretty big experience lead as well and with the double Midas like they've ensured their late game everything is rolling Tong Fu's way and even though the score kill doesn't necessarily show it it's just it's too much to deal with 
So what's the options available left here for newbie? They've got a tinker, so they can split push to a certain degree. Although there is a nature's prophet that can deal with KPI at the, the at the drop of a hat. You've got the Marana, which provides you moonlight shadow. She's also got the mechanism as well, so they do have a bit of extra sustain. But I don't, newbie just isn't in a position to really contest Hong Fu. They they may have to just rely on high ground as well as getting some quick rotations to draw the game out long enough so that KPI becomes a relevant force because right now he's just he's essentially a I don't know I want to say like a secondary version of Nature's Prophet which can't do that much outside oh. of just throwing out the march and it looks oh, like they're no. going to jump on him they catch on to Mu again he does go for the enrage but immediately into the dark pack and he's going to end up being fine through this as the Shadow Dance has already kicked in they're going after Lil they have vision of him Infernal Blade is going to be connected onto U9 but still fine for the moment chasing now Mu wants to get back into the midst of things they've already committed the doom onto LPC but he's just going to be able to walk it off again they killed off the Nature's Prophet but there was so much committed in that fight for newbie. They had to though, and I think just to grab a kill like that, it's it's something that's going to sort of reassure newbie and sort of tell them that they are still in this game. They are capable of killing some of these Tom Fu heroes. Arrow, oh never mind, oh. I didn't even need an arrow. Finger of death. It, it's it's completely worth it. The yeah. finger of death, a Rubik. It's just an ex it's a whole bunch of gold. Totally. Look at how much gold is in the line inventory now. One point eight k gold. He's quite close to getting a blink. Maybe that's a turning point for Newbie where they have a proper initiator so that Mu can safely jump on his targets without putting himself at total risk. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very happy lion right there. He ends up being able to just beat on down that Rubik. And, you know, again, we talked about the strength of this Rubik and his ability to sort of keep them off of the, or rather uh, supplement the push with that null field. He hasn't put any uh, item or any skill points into it yet. I'm wondering if when that starts to happen, it makes that, that pushing game even better. Like, they are, they've not even really hit their stride yet in terms of being able to have everything online. Uh, so... While we are finding these kills here and there for newbie, I, I really feel like they need so much more to turn this game back around. And uh, Tong Fu hasn't really been like trying to, not that they haven't been trying to, but they haven't been able to effectively push since they've taken down most of those tier two towers. Yeah, they're still waiting for the Aghanim Scepter to finish up on Linz. They're probably just waiting for these first few items to finish up and then they may start considering to to push up high ground. Uh, they've also got, they decide to go for a blink dagger on the Slark, interestingly enough. Uh, it does help U9 with his positioning when it comes to pounces. He is still pretty squishy though, so they're probably not going to consider going high ground until he's maybe finished up components of a Scardi, which, if you're this far ahead and you can get a pre-30 minute Scardi, he is going to be very tanky, and unfortunately for Newbie, their, their damage output isn't that impressive, unless they, if, unless they throw all of it onto the Slark, which if you throw everything to kill one hero, that's going to leave the rest of Tong Fu open to counterplay. Yeah, and it's not like they don't have damage on those other heroes. I mean, you've got Earth Spirit who just does a boatload, even though he doesn't even necessarily have that veil down yet. Uh, he drops down a remnant. He's looking to maybe see if he can make something happen over here. They ping yeah. out the area. They're looking. Oh, it's the wrong direction, though. He blinks to the left, and so they aren't going to be able to scout him. Maybe he's actually taking a ton of damage. LPC has to be careful there. Yeah, luckily for them, there's there's no global heroes such as a Nature's Prophet or an Invoker or a newbie to snipe him out. The LPC. Gonna be content that he doesn't die there. KPI still hanging around the bottom lane, so he's more or less content just consistently pushing out this top wave so that they have at least one lane going their way. Uh, BKB is almost done on Moo as well. That's a huge item for that Ursel. Once he's got the BKB up, there's essentially nothing Tong Fu can really do to control him outside of popping a sprout. And obviously he's got a quelling blade, so he's got his way to get out. He's going to be in a pretty good position. So that's the one little bright spot there is uh, he hasn't had to buy as many items so he can keep his quelling blade, um, <laughs> which is, you know, it's a, it's a bright way to look at it. Uh, we've got to find the silver linings. Um, but he is going to be building towards that BKB pretty soon, so that's going to end up making a pretty big difference. I don't feel like we felt the Marana's presence that much. The the few times that it's been able to you know commit those moonlight shadows, it hasn't really translated into uh, huge kills. Like there's been a couple little pickoffs here and there, but they also haven't been able to really save their teams that much. Um, I think I'm gonna try one more reconnect while we wait for this next fight to get started, uh, and we'll see if we end up being able to fix it. Sure. 
And for the moment, we actually got a bit of an engagement down bottom. They oh. found the Tinker again, but the Moonlight Shadow actually saving his life. Now is going to get dust, and he managed to have enough time to get the Blink Dagger off cooldown the TP out, or Blink out at least. Oh, that was super lucky for KPI, but they got the kill on the Slark. That's such a big kill. Oh my god. Slark, the heck? I'm just seeing a Dragonite loading screen. All right, they got the kill on him. Oh my god. That's so huge too. He managed to pick up the ultimate orb, but you still lost the Slark though. Such a huge hero, and they're gonna try and go for. A, they're trying to look for someone at least. Oh, Marana, don't get out of the trees. Just stay. Oh no, I don't know if you want to stay there anymore. Does anyone check the trees? <laughs> You'd want She's to. So close. Don't move. Don't even breathe. If she could get an arrow from behind, this might actually be a pretty huge play. If they're able to hit a solid arrow and it's going to get thrown out, it does not quite connect, but that does signal to them that, you know what, there's a Marana behind us, she leaps into the trees, and they're not going to be able to catch her. So, fine for the moment, um, I think. Oh my god, why is she... She has a TP. Uh, they probably think that she went away. Wow, they probably that's, thought she TP'd. That's the double bluff right there. Oh, Marana. That's good, though. It forced them all back. They were going to try and go for a push, but they saw the arrow incoming, and they just completely backed up looking for this Marana. Yeah. So she, she essentially bought Newbie some time in the bottom lane, and also getting KPI some time just to sort of push. He's gone for Ether Lens. What are your thoughts on a Tinker picking up an Ether Lens of all items? Well, you get a little bit of extra range on laser. Um, I think it does the same for heat seeking missile, if I'm not mistaken. That one's a little bit different, uh, just by nature of how it how it interacts with stuff. But uh, Sanchin gets stunned up. I I don't love it. Um, I I don't know if it's like it, it feels like he needs something big to really work, but it's an item that is trying to build into a next item. Uh, like I, I just don't love it. I, I really feel like he needs either more damage or more control. Uh, all of the sheep stick or the Dagon, one or the other. But yeah. while U9 is going to end up getting caught out, does not have the Dark Pact and Cannon X Shadow he actually gets killed off again. So Shan Shang has picked up another kill on the Slark and a huge amount of gold going his way. My goodness, this is freaking ridiculous. And they're going to take a tier 1 tower off the bottom as well. The blink on the line is giving Yubi so much value that Tongfu, unfortunately, without their Slark, they can't really make any major plays happen. And because Newbie is able to grab some of these kills, they're getting some crucial gold onto their core heroes. They're making some space so KPI is not being ganked to death anymore. And all of a sudden, you can say that Newbie's well in this game now. Their Ursa's getting huge. He didn't even use the BKB yet, so that's still on a 10 second duration. And if you're Tongfu, you've got to be a little bit worried. Uh, there was a Doom thrown out on... On the, the creep. He was going to lose it anyways on spell steal. Um, he oh, used it on the Hellbear okay. Smasher. Yeah, okay. it looks funny, but the there's, there's a reason. <laughs> Although they are about to get into a fight right now. That would have been pretty funny if they were about to get into a fight and Doom was on cooldown because of that. But yeah, it makes sense. It's gone now. He's not going to be able to use it. Sanshang is going to run forward, though, trying to catch. Does get the smoke broken. Going to be able to catch the stun on the LPC. He drops down. Big Bear Man's mad. Going to chase now after Kebu. They get the sprout, and he has not had his claw blade. blade. So he's going to be able to find the kill still, I think, though. Dropping low, and yeah, they find it. Nicely played there. Oh, that's what you get when you sell your Quelling Blade. The Nature's Prophet's going to be such a pest for the Ursa. No. And unfortunately for Ursa, unless the team picks up a 4-star for him, he can't really do anything about the the Sprout. Oh, Invoke on 1.4 second cooldown with that rune, and it looks like he's going to be looking for a little bit of action. Um, this is very, very bold, though. Like, everybody is right around him, and if they end up catching him, he's there with the uh, Ghost Walk. Goes for Sand Shank, misses! What? Uh, it hurts. They do TP in. They get the hex off on the faith. Oh my god, it's the worst gank in the world. They are going to be able to find the kill, though, I think. Um, there's this okay, they tornado got him. committed. If the rest of his team was there, that would have been uh, really bad, but um, man. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that Lion's movement, like, Shen, Shen Sheng just conveniently dodged. I don't think it was intentional, like, he was going to move there anyway. They found Mu in the mid lane. U9. He's trying to set everything up, but the Moonlight Shadow is going to get deployed. They do throw the Sun Strike, but it's not going to really be able to do much faith in the meantime. Trying to find targets, now all of a sudden being jumped up by a huge Ursa. They does get finished off from the lasers, and Mu still with the BKB, still chasing, trying to find here his LPC. He wants to try and get up, and he gets finished up by the bear. Now Kapu's the next one to drop. Three heroes oh, to die, Tong and Yubi lose absolutely nobody. Sorry, Tongfu lost three heroes. Whoops. 
That's fine. Lil, Lil might go down now. He gets away on 74 HP. That was really freaking close. Does Invoker have Sunstrike available? He does. Where's it at? Sunstrike? Oh. oh, nope. Okay. He was just trying to farm. Didn't realize that the creeps weren't there. Uh, but yeah, nobody saw. Don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> 2300 <laughs> gold is going to be the final switch around. And uh, that was a pretty freaking huge fight for newbie right there. You're, you're in a great position. They bring it back down to about even. It's a thousand gold, or rather experience lead into their favor. And the bigger thing is that now KPI, he's actually building into a big next item. After the Aether Lens, he's going back for the Mystic Staff. And I'm, I'm wondering... I feel like sheep oh, stick would dead. be good. Oh god, oh, really? It's so close. Almost died. Jeez. Oh, the rearm blink is so good. Oh, Faith is gonna silence up the lion. Unfortunately, he can't do that much by himself. Yeah, he's looking for that Tinker again, but uh, able to escape for the moment. And yeah, Tinker's out of there. That hero is just so nuts. Um, and I'm not sure what item he's gonna end up going for. I feel like sheep stick would be worth it. You've seen Tinker's go Shiva's guard, but I think that it's probably a little bit too early for that, and he needs something a little bit more uh, single target lockdown focused for that Slark. They throw out another arrow. Yeah. It's not going to connect onto anybody, but they did still have vision, and over here in the Vision's jungle, Lin oh. looking for Lee. Um, he can't afford to miss the combo. He gets it this time. Well, so far at least, they end up dropping down the EMP tornado combo, and the right clicks are there. They do bring in the Nature's Prophet as well. Going to toss down the Meatball, and he is going to end up falling. So a nice play there for the Invoker, able to get the kill. They still got a couple of newbie heroes dancing in the mid lane. With the Doom that's just died, they probably want to be backing out. And Marana, she's the one in the back lines. And there's the Yules, and everyone's just going to jump right on top of her. She's got Leap, but unfortunately, it doesn't really do too much. They, they kill off the Marana. They almost get the Earth Spirit. He's got the minus Earn charge, but I think he's going to be able to survive this. And everyone on newbie. They're going to have to retreat, but Sanshin gets silenced up, caught in the trees, and all of a sudden, he's going to be dead. Yeah. That's three heroes down. Earth Spirit got away on that 28 HP right there. That was absurd. Really good job again. So, you know, Tong Fu, they strike back. They're able to take down three there. Uh, the problem, again, is that they're not really taking objectives. Granted, you still have Newbie with Tier 1 towers up in the mid and the top lane, so it's really not that big of a deal, but they would like to be able to try and at least lay down the clamps a little bit, take down the Tier 2 tower in the bottom lane, uh, and get something. But they were looking to see if they could find the Tinker. Don't get him. They need to place down those wards up here. Yeah, they need to get at least a little bit of vision up there so they can catch him out. Like, KPI is starting to become super elusive. He's also finished up his Scythe of Ice. He just has to pick it up in his stash. And because he's also got the Ether Lens, you've got the extra range to work with with the Scythe of Ice. Yeah. So he doesn't have to be in the middle of the fights to get the Hex off, which is going to be incredibly helpful because for now, Ursa has some trouble just chasing down Tom Fu Heroes. Once you've got the Scythe of Ice, that's easy pickings for the Ursa. He just needs to control. Yeah, and I, I am kind of wondering now as well, like, we talked about the Tinker not working out. The main way that Tinker does not work out is in the early stages of the game, trying to get his boots to travel up, trying to get through those first big items. Once he gets them, it turns into an entirely different hero, and you suddenly have this this ability to, to completely dominate a game. So he's second in the net worth now after getting just completely dumpstered in the early stages. I feel like this is really starting to show uh, in the game, in Tong Fu's game, like they're going to end up getting caught out, I feel like, and it's really going to come down to ward vision and, and being able to, I guess, really control that hero. But I, I'm, I'm concerned that they're going to lose their opportunity. And I think the scariest thing here for Tong Fu is that if Tong Fu are ever in a situation where they want to push high ground, a Tinker that is stacked is a absolute nightmare to deal with. Uh, Nature's Prophet killed the courier in the dire base, by the way. Um, Smooth just to moves. Point that out. <laughs> that's, that's so common with Nature's Prophets nowadays, just to snipe couriers. But yeah, going high ground for Tong Fu is going to be a nightmare. As, KP, as KPI gets bigger and bigger, high ground just becomes more and more of a nightmare unless they can kill him off and then attempt a high ground without that Tinker presence. Mm -hmm. Okay, Boo again, moving in towards the mid lane with LPC, and they're seeing if anybody scouts out this area, but I realize that up here in the top is where they've got Lee, and they're going to end up trying to jump on him in a second, Invoker is there, they do end up already committing it, they're going to be able to get the Sunstrike combo, Meepo and Daphne Blast all going in conjunction, Lee is going to end up going down, and they might be able to find more, still looking for Moo, he's in the area as well, they do have a lift if they want to commit it, but the Tinker is there as well, and he's doing just a buttload of damage, they throw out the Tornado, BKB has already been popped, Moo jumps back in, onto Fate, the right clicks are there, a ton of damage coming out with the laser, and Lee is still trying to find something, they do manage to jump forward, U9 finds another kill, 
there. Marana goes down, and it looks like after that, Tongfu are going to have to back on out. But a really nice collection of kills. Three are dead, and only one from the side of Tongfu. They would have loved to grab more, but unfortunately they just couldn't get a hold of some of these newbie heroes. The Tinker can just sit so far back that for someone on Tongfu to get to him, they're going to have to either blink right into the back lines, or you're going to have to soak up all of the newbie damage just to get back there on top of, uh, of KPI. And he's he's getting huge. Have you seen what he's got now? He's got 1.8k. Yeah. Blink, Boots of Travel, Scythe of Ice, as well as Etherlim. Like, he's essentially got two more slots to go. Radiant's and then the Tinker's golden. He is going to be good to go for the rest of the game. Yeah, it's true. I mean, the thing to keep in mind, too, though, is that you've got Invoker with Aghanim Scepter, Octarine Core, like Yule Scepter. He, he can kill pretty much everybody, and he still has room to grow, too. He can sell his Midas eventually, sell the Aquila. Um, so both of these heroes, they do... Uh, not necessarily similar things, but, uh, you know, finding pickoffs and, and uh, pushing out creep waves. And also they've got the Slark. So the question that I feel like it really comes down to for me is how well does the Slark match up against the Ursa? And I, I think that once you start to get like a, a Basher or something up on the Slark or potentially an Abyssal later, uh, that's where things start to go wrong. But they do manage to jump forward again. Lee is going to get scouted out there and they're not going to go forward as Slark ends up backing away. Yeah, the moment he saw the Doom, he was just like, oh my god, I have to get out of here. <laughs> don't want to be doomed up before the Spark. Uh, both teams picking up gems on their supports. One on the Marana, as well as one on the Earth Spirits. They're going to try and get as much map control for themselves. If either of these two die, though, that means more map control to the other team, as they've already picked up the gem. But for now, it looks like Roche's going to be the target. They're going to spot this out, I believe, or do they just not know it's happening? Oh, it doesn't look like No it. one's showing themselves, so you would assume it if Roche is happening. They actually have a ward right here, but uh, and now as they see U9 going in, I think that they're going to realize what's happening. They do end up turning back around, but Roche is already going to be down. So they pop the dust, they have it on the Slark, and now I don't know if Newbie want to take this. They need to back out. I don't know if they. I don't know if they should either. They'd be better off if they try and go for a small pick off. Do they they have Moonlight Shadows. So they can Radiant's try and make use of that, but they've got to make sure that the Earth Spirit doesn't spot them. Because if an Earth Spirit say no Moonlight Shadow. He's going to be the first one to know that it's happening just because he's got the gem. Yeah, absolutely. So for now, everyone's just going to slow it down a little bit. Ursa's going back for eggs. Um, this is interesting. I, I think that it's pretty okay, uh, given that you're probably going to start to see some sheep six coming out and things like that. Uh, but I, I, I don't know if that would have been better than trying to finish off the Abyssal. Because if he can get like an Abyssal off on a Slark... They pretty much just almost win. I feel like it's so good, but just I guess the flip side of that is that if Ursa dies, they pretty much lose. Uh, so survivability trumps being able to, to get a kill, uh, and they're going to rely more upon the, the Tinker now to, to be able to have that control with the Sheep Stick. I think the, the Aghanim is quite reasonable this game. There's actually not that many disables on the side of Tongfu. Um, so Enrage will be very useful. It's got an 18 second cooldown when it's got the Ags too, so there's going to be consistent uptime. They don't get the Doom onto Faith. He gets silenced just in the nick of time. Now all of a sudden U9 is pouncing into multiple heroes. Everyone's in Moonlight Shadow, but they still know where Lee is. Sanjing has got stunned up by LPC. Looks like they're going to be losing the Lion. That's the first one to die. And everyone else on newbie, they're still retreating, but Lee is still sitting in the middle of the fray, but he should be able to get out. Never mind, there's going to be the Ice Wall. And everyone on newbie's just sort of left him to die. They know they can't help him. And that's going to be two heroes going in the way of Tong Fu's newbie. They're going to have to hide in their base for now and sort of buy time while waiting while waiting for both of them to respawn. Yeah, and that Doom, it's, it's so important for them to have that up. So now you're looking at this situation where he doesn't have buyback. He's down for 40 seconds. They've got a big creep wave. They can try and make something happen here, and you need to have Tinker here to continually push this creep wave out, as well as the other ones around the map. Oh, and Lin realizing what he was going to do. He's going to try and find him. Does he manage to cancel the TP? Not quite. So they're not going to be able to find the Tinker, and this means that the Invoker is not going to be up top for this push. Ah, uh, that's frustrating. Oh, they got the Hex up onto U9. They used the laser to pop the Lincolns as well, but it looks like no one's in a position to commit yet. If they get an array, they'll be nice, but... We, ha we really haven't seen any arrows that have landed coming out from the Marana, aside from the one that we saw during the early game. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like they could have swapped the Marana out for any other standard support, yeah. and that support would have performed much more than the Marana has this game. Like, there's just been no presence so far The, from the this one pick. thing you could end up saying is they are going to end up actually oh. catching KPI. He's going to end up going down here. Uh, and this is a huge problem, because now you don't have that... I mean, does he have buyback right now? 
Yes, he does. Okay, so thankfully he does have buyback, but with the Aegis still up, like, they're going to be ready to go. Um, she farmed pretty well with the arrow, but oh, now they catch now on the San Shang. There's already LPC caught up with the fish, and they're going to jump forward. Doom has been committed now on a Kebu, trying to run away. Still a lot of damage coming out, and they've lost one. They're going to end up losing two. Tinker buys back. He wants to get back into the fray here. U9 is still controlled. He didn't get his dark back up and silenced as well. They're going to be able to bring him down. The Aegis has already been popped one time. He does have a blink when he gets back up, and I think that he should be fine. But that was a huge win for, uh, for Newbie. Oh, Lin, he's looking for for more kills. Does he have the gem on him? He's got no detection. The moon that shadow just expired, and KPI, he was gonna TP under that creep to chase down the invo um, to chase the down the invoker as the creep sort of showed off where he was. But now he's gonna TP in. There's two heroes dead for Tom Fu. Does Nubi really can? Does Tom Fu really want to fight into Nubi right now? They're missing two heroes. Yeah, this is this is okay. very sketchy. Um, again, they're they're jumping forward, and uh, looks like they're gonna back out now. So. The Aegis already expired. This does mean that it's going to be a little bit more difficult for Tong Fu to really, like, take high ground. I, I feel like for them to take high ground, they need to be able to find the Tinker again. The, the, the plus side is that they forced him to buy back. So that's one thing that you can consider a huge win. And if they kill him again, they basically win the game, I feel like. Mm. But the thing is, is KPI going to kill them again? Yeah. He can always just play super defensive and wait till buyback arrives. Like, he doesn't even have to leave the base. Going to get spotted by the creeps. And he also almost oh. got Sunstrike. Wait. Actually, he's been found by Faith. Oh, he blinks out in time. Can Faith get him, though? He's got nothing to cancel the TP with anyway. See, this is the oh. thing. They've got those Tinker Wards down now. And actually, oh, Kebu, he placed another one. So they, they do have vision, but they don't see the, the Rubik as of yet. And they're going to go check it right now. Um, arrow oh, and oh my god. Late. Okay, yeah, they know that these wards are here now, so it's becoming a high priority to take them out. They need to. They need to ensure the safety of KPI as much as they can. And when's he have buyback again? He's got it in five minutes. That's five minutes of defense for newbie and five minutes of defensive and careful play by KPI. Yeah. They've they got can buy that, that time. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like, I, I really do believe that, you know, he's starting to scale into this hero that's going to be really hard to deal with. So even if you do manage to, like, find him on the map, you're not always going to be able to kill him off before he's able to get, like, a sheep off on you and then TP away. Uh, so that's something else to consider here. Um, but it, right now it's just Hunt the Tinker. Hunt the Tinker. I don't know if they want to spend too much time trying to chase down KPI, though. Like... KPI is making so much space because he's always on the map that it's giving Mu more and more farming time. Although the alternative though for Tong Fu is that because the game's gone on like this, U9's managed to get a lot of farm. And they're actually going to smoke up as well and they really want to look for kills. Scardi is done as well on the Slark. He's also got 3.4k um, gold on top of this. We presume it's going to be a Basher into Abyssal? That seems to be pretty good. Um... I don't really see a whole lot else that he would want to do besides just making sure that he can get the initiation off. They are going to be able to catch now. EMP Tornado comes through. Out of mana, out of time. Stunned up. BKB forward. They do have the BKB already popped now on the Invoker, and they are going to be able to kill off the Nature's Prophet. So a pretty big one, but the meter is going to end up getting dropped down, as well as the Deafening Blast doing a ton of damage there, and still lifted up the air. The Ursa is going to be controlled for the moment. They're sprouted up in there with U9. He is going to end up going down, I believe. Is U9 actually going to end up dying here? He's dropping so low. Sunstrike's going to fly, and and they end up getting the kill. So now you are out in Ursa and out a lion. Buyback status is only on the Ursa. I, I don't know if that's enough. They'll probably be able to force the buyback at least. Yeah, they'll definitely buy back if Tong Fu does consider high. Uh, would you buy back though? You've got a Tinker that can defend high ground relatively well. He can spam the march now if he does have a decent mana pool. It's like a fluid situation. If they're able to keep him out, then no, you don't. But like right now, Tinker has to go back to base to regen up his mana, and so there's an opportunity here for them to take this tower, even though there's the March of the Machines going on. And you do see the tornado come on out again. They gotta keep their eyes on the prize, make sure they're taking down the tower. It does end up falling. There's the EMP that goes through. Another deafening blast onto several, and they're able to steal away another spell. That one was Scorched Earth, so still fine for the moment. The arrow's gonna hit. A lot of trouble, the finger of death, but they keep him alive with the four staff. And now Lin's back into the fray. They're trying Trying to take him down here. Ice Wall BKB popped again and chasing him down. They are going to be able to find that U9 on a Sand Shang. He's going to end up going down, I believe. Earth Spike comes through. He's actually going to be able to walk away from that one. And they're still going to take the barracks, though. Oh, 
apologies. This is not what Newbie was looking for. They had a tinker, they could have gone for the high ground defense, but unfortunately with the Ursa and the Lion down, they can't defend efficiently enough. The tinker in himself just isn't good enough. I actually wanted to point out as well in that middle team fight where the where the Ursa and Lion died, Doom tried to pop a Doom onto the onto the Invoker, but it actually oh. proc the Lincolns. So he didn't even get Oh no, KPI! KPI is not supposed to die! KPI is dead with no buyback! <laughs> Oh, God. He did no. kill the Nature's Prophet, and Nature's Prophet doesn't have buyback either, but Tinker is so much more important. Oh no, all of a sudden they're going to try and jump onto Lin. Is there enough damage output though? It's just a Lion and a Doom, they, they don't do that much between them. And Invoker's reasonably fast, the Earth is going to try and chase, but support's coming in. Carbo as well as U9, they forced up, they blink in with Lin, but all of a sudden they let the Invoker slip. He needs a regen as well, just at the end of the duration, but unfortunately he didn't get the regeneration proc. Lin is being chased up by a slug. The arrow lands onto U9. Is this enough to disable for them to kill off this slug? And they have to buy time. Lin does it. The ultimate gets proc by U9. Now he's going to try and turn on to Mu, but he's not hitting that hard. Now all of a sudden the slug's in a bit of an interesting position. He will kite around and he will start to heal up, but now it's going to be Lin's turn. The arrow completely whiffs. They jump with Mu, and unfortunately... That's not going to be enough. The BKB will keep him alive. He can keep on kiting Ursa now. And then all of a sudden, Miri's going to be hit with the slug too. They're going to oh lose Ursa. God. She's got buyback and the Mirana needs to get out of here. She's going to try and go for a TP. Nothing She's to catch stuck. Never mind. Cold snap. She got cold snap. Oh no, it's a complete wipe now. Tong Fu. I wow. think that they might have done it. They, they Again, this, this does buy time for Tinker. Like, Tinker's about to be back up with the Lion. I don't know if he alone is going to be able to hold this, though. You've just got so much damage coming out from all of these cores, and it's going to be a really tough ask for them to be able to make it happen. Uh, again, about a 3,000 gold swing off the back of that, but more importantly, the path to the racks is open, and you see over here to the side again, Faith just ends up dying again to the Stinker! He's far too far out there, and again, you do have a little bit of space created off the back of that, but... Man, that was your moment, and now they're going to buy back on the Ursa. Like, they're going to be able to defend this, potentially. They do jump forward off to the side here. They're going to be able to catch U9, still controlled for the moment, but not going to be able to do enough, I don't think. Is Doom back up? Not for 17 more seconds, but I think that U9 still does go down. 1,100 gold going the way of the Lion, and Tongfu completely throw away their advantage. Do they really throw all of their advantage away, though? They still manage to take the the tower. I mean, they they should. Uh -oh. It's not just me, guys. There we go. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, the, they threw away a lot of it. Like they could have just won the game right there if they would have executed well. I feel like, or at least gone back and taken Roshan. Like if they would have backed and gone Roche and then waited for everybody to be back up, this game is completely and totally fine. As it stands, again, you're looking at a Slark with no buyback dead for 90 seconds. And, you know, Nature's Prophet, he doesn't have buyback, and he's down for 40 seconds. And while they do have Tier 1 towers that are still up and available, like, this is so much space and time given to Newbie to be able to get back into this game. And I think the scariest thing is KPI is still getting bigger. He's only got Dagon level 2, but just imagine what happens once he actually finishes up that Dagon, Dagon 5. Yeah. And we, we already saw him insta-gib the Nature's Prophet, like Nature's Prophet, what happened when he TP'd in was he TP'd in roughly in that vicinity and he just, he was just wanted to summon the treants and start pushing into the base. All of a sudden KPI to the rescue, jumps on top, hexes, Dagons, rearms and Dagons and that was it, the Nature's Prophet was decimated. So they still have to show some respect to the Tinker as he has a lot of killing, solo killing potential now just because of that level 2 Dagon. It looks like the Kale has settled and we are going to be starting in a moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, they're saying that it's time to go. Good, good, good. We're going to get back on into this. Oh, wow. I can't believe that that stuff happened, though. It's so ridiculous. Um, again, Kabu, he's he's moving up front and center here. They're going to place a couple of wards, trying to get vision. Oh, God, please don't walk into the woods right now. The Doom is there. <laughs> they, they he's just out him. of vision range. Does he know he's there? Lee, okay, Lee decided to hide in the very crevice of that camp, and all of a sudden, now he... Unfortunately, hiding doesn't really help. And he also gets Devour, so Kabu mm. gets some extra gold. Nice. He can get some... Okay, just devours that little creep. Um, does that give him the bonus? No, it didn't. No. That would have been pretty nice, because he already ends up getting right now the 20% magical resistance bonus to everybody around him. Uh, they do end up being able to get in here, and now, like, 
This is the problem. You end up giving Nubia away Roshan, and how do you stop this at this stage? Like, they're all gonna be here, but they don't have a Slark to be able to stop this. Maybe they could throw in a really good EMP Tornado combo. They do think about it for the moment. It's gonna end up dropping down the Meteor as well, but they've already popped the BKB, so that's a little bit of a win. I don't know if it's enough. It. They're rolling Boulder forward. They're trying to kill off Roche. Are they gonna be able to have get it? it? Radiant, it's on the ground. Nobody's picked yes, up the Aegis. Oh, God. All right, yeah, and that's a problem now. Now you've lost the Earth Spirit too, and Fate's gonna end up going down as well. Kabu, they're trying to chase here, and they're gonna be able to blink forward and find them, and they get the stomp. They're gonna be able to chase here as well, and Faith is gonna go down. Suddenly, four heroes are dead. Tong Fu are dis. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. They've been it. dismantled. Tong Fu, is this reminiscent of Game One? Yeah. Have they given you be too much? Because that 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 feels like the case. They've given away so much of their lead that newbie themselves can start contesting Tong Fu, and then Tong Fu just doesn't have the momentum anymore. It's oh jeez. They're winning fights. Like they, they first of all, it's worth noting Tong Fu took that fight without their Slark. Like they should not have committed that hard for that. Like you don't have to do it. I feel like they were just antsy to try and make the huge play that allows them to win the game, and it's just it, you, you can't do that. So, um, Granted, I do that all the time in my pubs, but I'm, I'm also not a professional Dota 2 player. <laughs> so, like, I mean, I understand the temptation, but at the same time, it's like, you got to be able to have a little bit more composure there. And interestingly, Tinker goes back for the Glimmer Cape. Um, so this is just something that he keeps in his inventory, I guess, uh, when he, he's switching it out for the Soul Ring. I'm wondering what the thought is behind that. Do you have any idea? Well, a lot of the damage from Tong Fu so far when it comes to chasing down KPI is magical damage. So when he tries to go for the TPs, he pops the Glimmer. So even if Tong Fu tries to burst him down, maybe he can buy himself some time. Because it's mostly been the the Meteor Deafening Blast combination from it, from Lin that's been killing him off half the time. So you can sort of understand it. He wants to hide where he's also TPing. So it forces Tong Fu to look for him with a gem. And without detection, you're not going to find him. Yeah. Um, he will probably turn it into a bloodstone later on down the line. He's still got the soul ring in his inventory, so he may change it out at some point. So he gets the extra mana charges, and then he can stay in the middle of the fights longer just because he's accumulated all the mana charges. Yeah, and I, I kind of wonder now also, as this game goes on, like Doom is becoming, I feel like, super relevant. And I, I wonder if it's worth it for him to go for that refresher eventually as well. Like that item, he went for the Shiva's Guard, but being able to get that off, like so many of the heroes here for Tong Fu rely upon their ability to cast those spells. Earth Spirit completely and totally. Uh, Nature's Prophet to a large extent. The only one that, I mean, even Slark, like as a carry, you know, you compare him to Sven or something, he needs to be able to have that Dark Pack going so that he's not going to get controlled up. And um, it's worth noting he also does have his Abyssal Blade now. I, I just, I'm, I'm really, really wanting to see another refresher going up on him, or maybe a Shadow Blade to allow him to get a little bit better initiation onto the perfect target. Uh, a late game Shadow Blade here just becomes tremendous. What are your thoughts on Ali considering to grab an Aghanim Scepter so he gets that increased duration on the Doom? So he can really chase down a target, say for example, you don't have to worry about Doom expiring as long as the Doom is within within chase because like that's been the case sometimes where they're trying to chase heroes and they chase for so long that the duration ends and then support comes in for Tong Fu. Yeah I think that the, I mean you can go for that I, I feel like a lot of what it is though is more like that they haven't all been together for that which maybe just signals that maybe newbie need more coordination so that when the doom goes off they're not it's not just doom and then nothing else to follow it up um but a way to be able to mitigate that of course is the agnum so i, I think it really comes down to how they want to run lee if they want to run him in more of a a sort of coordinated attack then i think refresher makes more sense if if they're looking for sort of random pickoffs here and there where they're going to be able to to catch somebody out when the rest of the team isn't around then you probably are going to end up looking for uh, the the Aghanim Scepter and said, or he could just go for none of those and just build more utility. I mean, another sheep stick would be great in this game if you want to go for it. Okay, so it looks like they're trying to find kills. They actually use the Moonlight Shadow as well, just to guarantee that if someone was in the jungle and the, and the smokes pop, that they still would have remained invis, but they didn't get anybody. Yeah. Everyone in Tong Fu is up in the top lane because they know that they know their jungle is unsafe, especially when no one on Newbie is showing themselves. And now it's going to be Tong Fu to smoke up. Can they find any, any kills? Who does not have buyback on Newbie? Everyone except yeah. Lion. So <laughs> any kills they get in the next fight, excluding Lion, means that they're not going to be available for after that. They won't be able to buy it back. Morana oh, and Doom are so close. Easy. 
And, oh god, this is the play right here. If they're going to be able to catch on to Moo, they are going to be able to get the sheep off. They can control him a heck of a lot, and he drops down pretty low. BKB popped as well as the Agnum Scepter upgrade ultimate. They do jump now onto Lee, dropping down the Meteor. It's going to do a lot of damage, but BKB's been popped for the Doom as well. It gets dropped onto the Earth Spirit, still alive for the moment, and there's going to be the catch onto Lee, doing a lot of damage. They're not going to be able to bring anybody down as of yet, though. They do finally finish him off, and he does not have buyback. So a really key pick off there, and Earth Spirit's going to survive throughout the duration. So with that kickoff though, do they feel comfortable going high ground? There's no doom and obviously he's not going to have buyback. Tongfu would at least attempt to try and force out the buyback and then once they realize there's none, maybe they can do a little bit more damage to that bottom T3. Because yeah, the T3 down here is only at 530 HP. That's in a reasonable uh, in a reasonable health threshold for Tongfu to take it quickly. Mm -hmm. No, I would agree, uh, and it looks like instead they're going to go be going for mid. I, if they win a fight at this point, though, the game's pretty much over. So if they can do chip damage onto any of these, it's worth it. Uh, but pretty much the most important thing for me is is winning the fight. Uh, and so wherever they feel like they're going to be able to do that most effectively is probably where they're going to end up going. And Glimmer Cape forward for KPI. Yeah, gets the sheep off. It was a pretty nice initiation. And Mary they get Moo caught. Oh, the arrow is not going to catch on to anybody. A lot of damage coming out. Moo is going to end up dropping. Slark finds the kill after the Abyssal Blade was used. And now they're going for the barracks. That may have been the game changing or lo the game losing move coming out from the from the earth side. He blinked in, but he blinked into a hex. Yeah. He, he got hexed the moment he landed, and all of a sudden, and all that, then all that said and done, Newbie's going to lose their base without a doubt. I don't know if they're going to be able to hold against Mega Creeps, unfortunately. They get a kill onto the Earth Spirit at least, but their base is pretty much gone. Tong Fu. They're able to pull it together here in the end. Deafening Blast comes out. They're going to jump onto Lee. He's going to BKB and walk away. There's still a ton of damage there. And Faith pops his own BKB. He's going to chase here after KPI. He's Glimmer Caped up, so fine for the moment. But they kill off Lil and U9. He's going to keep on chasing. He's going into the fountain at this point. He doesn't even care about this Tinker at all. They do get the Sprout off, and he's going to be able to go for the Shadow Dance through. He's diving fountain, because why not? It's celebration time. I think that they're going to be able to do it. Tier 4s are going down. They're still lifting up onto Faith. He does end up dropping down, and that's the Gemma Chusite on the ground as well. KPI, they end up being able to get the Hex on to Lin, still looking around with U9, and they end up getting the Sheep off a second time through. I just don't think they have the damage, though. At this point, Tongfu is just corralling Newbie in their base. Yeah. Like, they're losing all of their T4s, and U9 is just going to sort of play here with Newbie, although he may lose his life in the process. He's taking a lot of damage. <laughs> if he gets out of that, would have been a miracle, but they lose the stock. But Invoker, he's got one thing in mind, and he wants to win the game. So yeah. essentially, this is pretty much game over. So Tong Fu, they managed to take the series in a 2-0 fashion. Yeah, but now watch as the lag all disappears at once. And look at that, it's all perfect and wonderful again as we're off the server. Good game well played ends up getting called as Tong Fu win it in spectacular fashion. It was a hard-ass series, though, and they're about to go into the next one against VG Reborn. Um, what do you think their chances are here, and, and how do you feel about this series as a whole? Considering the series that they played today, they are looking pretty good as a team. They've made some... Uh, unfortunately for Tongfu, they are suffering from a couple of inconsistencies when they play. They make some questionable plays. They sort of get ahead of themselves, but they do have a lot of promise. Against VGR, though... I don't know about the status of VGR, so I can't really comment on that matchup. Yeah. But for Tongfu, though... They're looking pretty good as a team so far. Yeah, we'll see how they end up being able to do it. That match is going to be taking place next. We'll let you know as anything else does come up. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's an absolute pleasure casting for you all. Hopefully you guys didn't end up suffering too much from the Kale. I know that it's strong sometimes, but we were able to persevere, cast through it, and do, um, you know, watch, watch some pretty good Dota. It was, it was awesome to check out. And so oh, stick yeah. around. Uh, again, H Cup, Lyrical Dota, as well as Danny Lee Cast. Any final word before we cut to a quick little break here? Woohoo for Chinese Dota. <laughs> That's right, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we'll be back. See you guys in a second, and happy April Fool's Day wherever you are in the world.